Hey, what's up everyone? This is Rob with Blame Rob Videos, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play Civilization V. Uh, this is a very complicated game, so the goal of this video is to show a new player, a brand new player, just enough for the basics so that they can understand what's going on and start playing. Uh, I'll create a game with standard settings. Uh, you can pick whichever civilization you want, but I'm just going to pick uh, America for this video. And then I'll set the difficulty to level 1 Settler, just so we can learn how to play this game. If you're just starting out, I recommend well, you start out on uh, the you easiest difficulty, the just to learn the game. So Civilization V is a turn-based strategy century. game. You Within play it on a large years, map, divided up into tiles, in and the most basic way to win is by killing the other civilizations, and we'll kind of get into that. We'll, sh we'll show you how to do that in this video. Um, you start off the game with two units. You get a settler and a warrior. The settler is what uh, you need in order to build your city, and the warrior is your basic fighting unit. So, if you're just starting out, go ahead and click on your settler, and you, you can move him around in the beginning, but for now, just settle him in place. And let's take a look at the city. So go ahead and click on the name of the city, and click on Citizen Management up here. And this shows you the different uh, production that each of the different tiles is producing. So this game, one of the aspects of this game is the, the tiles and what kind of um, things the tile is producing. So a tile can produce uh, different amounts of three different uh, things. So the first thing is food, indicated by the green apples. The next thing is production, indicated by the hammer. And the last thing is gold, in indicated by the gold coin. In order to grow your city, in order to build things, in order to buy things, you need to be working these tiles. When you start out your city, you start with one citizen, so as you can see here. You have one citizen, and he works one of the tiles. So your cap, your capital works one, but then you get one citizen to throw around wherever you want. And usually, uh, if you just let the AI handle it, it usually defaults to whichever tile has the most food. And so let's talk about these three different um, things here. So food is used to grow your cities. Each citizen in your city requires two food. And right now, this city is the city is producing four food, two from this first city tile, and then it's producing two from the tile that's being worked. So since it only needs two, there's two in excess, and that excess goes towards growing the city and producing a new citizen. So if you look at the summary, you can see that there it says progress in the middle. It says progress zero out of 15. So each turn, it's gonna take that extra two and put it towards the progress. And once it reaches 15, the city will grow and it will get a new citizen. And then you can use that citizen to work another tile. And then the progress, the amount of progress required in order to grow a third citizen will increase from like 15 to 20 or 25 or something like that. And it keeps going up and up. So that's how you grow your city and uh, work more tiles. The production or hammers is used to build units in the city, units or buildings. So if you click on choose production over here, uh, you'll see that right now we have a basic set of, we have a small set of things we can build, a couple of units and one building. Uh, we used our, we can build more settlers, we can't build them yet, but we can build them later. Uh, you can build a worker, which as the name implies, helps you uh, improve the tiles around you. It works to improve the tiles around you. Uh, you can build a scout, which is technically a combat unit, but it, as the name implies, it's used for scouting, and you can build more warriors. Um, for now, we're going to start off by building a scout. And the thing I want to show you is that all these units and buildings have an associated cost. So it tells you the cost. So the scout costs 25. And right now your capital is producing five hammers. And so it'll take uh, five turns before this scout gets pumped out. And it tells you that right here. So it's really convenient. It tells you how many turns it takes before each of these things pops out. So we'll start with scout. Um, what's the last one? Gold. So gold... Uh, is the last resource thingy that can be produced by tiles. And instead of taking turns to build something using hammers, you can instead use gold to purchase the unit instantly. And so um, the advantage is you get to purchase it instantly, but the disadvantage is that gold costs are usually really high, so it's rare for you to buy a lot of things unless you make a lot of gold later in the game. 
Um, there are other things that gold can be used for, such as trading with other civilizations. It can be used for quests. It can be used for upgrades. There's a lot of different things you can use gold for. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to go over as far as the city goes? Not yet. Not yet. Let's, uh, let's look at our warrior. So with our warrior, when you start at the game, the warrior is your basic combat unit, so you can use it to defend your city. But when you just start out, you want to use your warrior to explore. You want The thing you're looking for are other places to build more cities, good places to build more cities. And you're also looking for things, um, I think it's, you're looking for ancient runes. Ancient runes are this thing in the game where if you touch it, you, you get a free goodie. Sometimes it has gold, sometimes it has units or upgrades. Um, but for now, I'm just going to try to move my warrior around. And if what you're looking for are things like rivers. You're looking for things that have resources. Like if you if you look at the map, um, you'll see things like silver. If you hover over it, things like wheat, uh, ivory. Uh, what is this? Dyes, deer, fish. These are all resources. They produce um, more production. They produce more uh, of these of the food production or gold than they would normally otherwise do on that tile. And so you're looking for things like that. You also need resources for um, building certain units and you also need it for happiness, which we'll get into later. But for now, just you're just trying to look for a good place to settle your second city. Uh, the last thing we do before we end our turn is choose research, uh, our research. So in this game, there's a technology tree and you start out with agriculture. And then you research all these other technologies. And these technologies do all kinds of various things, such as unlocking, <clears throat> excuse me, unlocking new military units or allowing you to build certain improvements like mines or chopping down forests. Later in the game, it lets you build certain buildings in your cities, et cetera, et cetera. And <clears throat> let's see, what are we going to start off with? We are going to start off with... Let's get mining. We have silver around here. So to know which type of improvement you need in order to uh, improve a tile, you can go to the help menu and you can go to resources and you look for the resource that you're trying to improve. So I think we're trying to improve silver. And so you can see here that it requires a mine. And if you click on mine, it'll tell you that you need mining in order to access this technology or this improvement. So we are going to research mining, and that's pretty much it. So before we end our turn, I just want to point out that it's going to take uh, eight turns before mining is researched. Oh, so researching something takes takes science. Um, if you hover over something, see where it says cost 31 science? That's how much science it takes to uh, complete research of this technology. Um, some people also refer to it as beakers because they because they use the beaker icon you generate science from all kinds of things primarily your city your different cities and populations so if you go to your city and you hover over science this particular city is producing three from buildings uh, that's from your palace so if you so I'll get into buildings later but basically you're producing three from your palace and then you also get science for each citizen you have in your city so it's getting one for now because we only have one citizen so when you grow your cities they'll produce more science and then you can research technologies faster and stuff like that so anyway mining is going to take eight turns uh, our population is going to grow in eight turns and our scouts going to come out in five so let's click next turn And let's see, where are we going to go? We're just going to keep exploring with the warrior, uh, looking for certain things, looking for good places to found our city or ancient ruins. And these borders here, so aside from the other civilizations that are in the game that you're trying to beat, there are these what I'll refer to as neutral cities, which are called city-states, and we'll, you'll see what happens when I explore this a little bit further. All right, so let's see if I can get over here. All right, so you have met the city-state of Cape Town. So city-states, again, are neutral cities. They don't build settlers to build more cities. This is the only city they'll have. Their borders still expand, and they do a variety of different things. The first evident thing is that when you first discover them, they give you a gift of gold. Um, if you click on the city, you'll get some details about the city. And so you'll have... 
these city blah, blah, blah. these city states can either be neutral to you or they can be allies or enemies and it just depends on how you interact with them we're not going to get into super detail in this basic tutorial video but basically s cities will ha um, sometimes have quests for you that you can complete and get that'll give you favor you can also give them a gift of gold and you'll gain influence if you get enough influence depending on the trait of the city state you'll get a bonus so this particular one is a maritime uh, city state and if you give it enough gold or you somehow gain enough influence it'll give you food which will help you grow your capital and if you um, get more food it'll help grow your capital faster than you other than you normally otherwise would so it's just another place you can spend gold or another place you can send units to um, try to complete the quests that they will give and they'll they'll have alerts for you okay so we're just gonna keep on trucking here and looking for stuff all right there we go so we found runes we need to go touch them now and you'll see what happens and it looks like we found another AI over here as well so um, one thing I forgot to mention with the warrior is that most land units have two movement but if you'll notice, I can't move two spaces towards the ancient runes anymore because this forest is blocking my way. So going over, going through forest or hills or going over water is like difficult terrain. It's rough terrain. And so it gives you a penalty, penalty to movement. So I can only move one space this turn. And looking back at our city, we can see that, you know, the city's growing. It's four more turns until I get a new citizen. We can also see that my scout's about to come out and we can see that mining is still being researched. All right, let's talk about the scout. So I, I just mentioned that there's rough terrain in this game. So normally when a unit is trying to go over uh, water or on a hill or through a forest, there's a movement penalty. Well, scouts don't have that movement penalty. They, they ignore the terrain costs. That's why they're good. That's why they're good for scouting because there's a whole lot of map to explore in the beginning of the game and they're cheap to build uh, and they have the same tube movement as a warrior, but they're able to move much quicker through the rough terrain and look at that we found a, a rune and it adds up because if because if i had a warrior this would have taken me four turns to get to but since it's a scout it only takes two so oh and, and actually i found two different runes so this is great all right so let's continue trucking out okay so the warrior can move here and then he'll move here all right runes explored you you find survivors among the runes which agree to join your empire as settlers okay great so they gave us another settler and we'll look for a nice spot to put the settler uh, if you highlight the settler, the computer will try to tell you good spots to put um, your, to found your new city. And, you know, when you're just starting out, it's not a bad idea to put it where it tells you. It tries to put you near what's called luxury resources, and you need that for happiness, which I'll get into later. But um, for now, let's try to find a spot to settle our city. And actually, so the settler isn't a combat unit. So if an enemy player or a barbarian which hope, which we'll probably see here in a second touches the settler it'll get captured and so i'm not going to move my settler yet i'm going to wait for my warrior to get movement before i before i uh, move the settler all right so i'm going to keep on trucking i think he can move nope he's out of moves all right oh choose production so now that the scout's done i go back to the original city I, my capital city and i can choose something else to build so we've already made a scout let's make a worker that's usually what happens so we're going to make a worker and what the worker does is um, he's going to improve these tiles so they produce more. So right, for example, this one right here, it's producing two two food, one hammer, and one gold. If I improve it, it'll, uh, I think, th this is deer, right? Yeah, this is deer, and it requires trapping. I may not have, I don't have that yet, but if I were to improve it, I think it adds a hammer to that tile. So anyway, let's click on next turn. All right, the scout is going to continue on and touch the runes. And this one's going to give me increased population in my capital. So instead of having one citizen like it did before, that rune gave me an additional citizen uh, to my capital. So as you can see, these runes are nice. They give nice little bonuses early in the game. Um, definitely worth getting. Uh, so now I have two citizens, and now it's going to take me six turns before I grow to my third citizen. Um, if you look here on the tiles being worked, you can see that the same tile is still being worked, but now a new tile is being worked. So now in total, I'm producing six food. Um, I think I get three hammers from the land, but then I have a I have a building that gives me three more hammers, so six total. And then I have I'm working two. I get two gold from the land, and then I ha I think the no I get three. Oh no, I get three gold from the land, and then I get three from my building. So they're still going to go to work, and we're going to keep exploring. So. 
let's put this cellar somewhere. So either wants me to put it over here on the right. Oh, and look, there's another ancient runes over here, over there. Wow, that's great. All right, so I've already explored over here. Let's see. There's ivory, which is a happiness resource, and we'll get back to that in a second. But do I really want to place it there? I'll place it. I'll, I'll explore over here first and see what's over here. So let's look over here. All right, so it looks like there's ivory over here, and it looks like it wants me to settle over here. What does this give me? This gives me a bunch of elephants and a bunch of cattle. Uh, do I want to? Do I want? Sure, why not? Let's go settle over there. Oh, it gives me desert though. That's not good. So, as you can see, I'm being a little critical, even though this is a tutorial video. But um, as you learn this game, you'll you'll come to discover that placement of your cities is absolutely crucial and um, you want to be in optimal positions or you want your cities to be in optimal locations so I'm just gonna put my city where it wanted me to which is right here and so you can move so you can see the sellers move and then you just click on found city and now I have a new city and if you'll notice my happiness level is going down and happiness is a measure of unit in this game to try to prevent you from expanding too much um, or just spamming cities it's it's how do they refer to it online I forget but happiness is another thing you have to look out for basically you start out with a certain amount of happiness and every time you make more cities every time you create more cities and every time you get more citizens your happiness decreases and there are things you can do in order to increase your happiness to counteract that the most common thing is to look for what's called luxury resources. And luxury resources are certain resources uh, on the map that will provide you with extra happiness when they get uh, improved. So, so, for example, sil for, so for example, silver is a luxury resource. And when this gets worked, once I have, um, once I have enough, uh, once my borders expand and once I work this uh, silver, it'll give me more happiness. <laughs> You can look for you can have a you can look at the list of all the luxury resources by going to help, and then I think if you go to let's go to homepage and then let's go to I think if you click on resources ah so it tells you all the different luxury resources here so these are all the things that will add happiness to your empire um, when you work those various things so let's just keep trucking all right choose production what do I need oh so I found it a new city so it needs to work something it always has to build something all cities are always building stuff. And you're always researching. So let's see, what is it going to build? Let's build, let's build another worker. All right. And then the warrior is he, is, he still has moves left. Let's uh, let's keep exploring. My scout's up there, so I'm going to explore down here. And now I have met Genghis Khan. And you can interact with these different civilizations. You can trade with them. Um, you can pay gold for luxuries. You can sell your luxuries to them. You can, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. You can also talk to them, no. and there are a whole bunch of different diplomacy options available to you. This is a basic tutorial video, so I'm not going to be going over that. Um, diplomacy takes a little while to explain, and I might show you an example of how that works in the, uh, later in the video, but for right now, we're just going to not interact with uh, the AI in that way. All right, where am I going? Oh, I've missed my stupid... There was a Ancient Runes over there, and I didn't get it with my scout. All right, so this one gave me more map. So now I can see over here, I think, and I think that's all it gave me. All right, um, where am I going? Okay, my warrior needs to move. Let's see if I can move through this. I don't know. Okay, good. So he's going to move through there. Uh, research. So I'm done with mining. I am going to... Let's, let's get... And let's, what's around me? I have silver there, silver, silver. Okay, so I need animal husbandry for this cattle and I need trapping for this uh, ivory. So I'm gonna pick, I think I need, so I need animal husbandry because that's gonna let me construct a pasture for the cattle and then trapping lets me construct the camp for the ivory. So I'm gonna go towards uh, that. And you can click on trapping instead of animal husbandry but it lets you know that it's gonna be one turn away or one tech away because you need animal husbandry first. And sometimes you need multiple techs before you can open up, uh, before you can start researching it. So for example, engineering, you need mathematics as well as construction. So I will be researching trapping. All right, let's keep going on. Uh, and the sieves get mad when you settle near them, so they just let you know 
not to settle near them. And then at higher difficulties, it affects diplomacy and interactions and stuff, and they might go to war with you. So it's just something to keep in mind. But at early difficulties, the enemy civilizations are so weak, you can do whatever you want, really. So we're just going to keep on going. OK, so now is a good time to talk about culture. You see this uh, message that says, may adopt policy. So what is culture? Culture is uh, this purple stuff here. And culture is produced usually by buildings. So right now, my palace is producing one culture. And culture does two things. The first thing it does is it lets you op uh, adopt social policies. So up here at the top, where it says next policy, you'll notice it's 10 out of 10. That's because I've been getting one culture every turn. And now that I've filled up this, this uh, uh, bar or whatever, I now have access to uh, a social policy. So I'm going to click on this message. And now I get to pick a social policy. Uh, you can you start out by being able to pick from three different ones, tradition, liberty, and honor. And social policies are basically like talents. Um, you uh, basically get perks for picking these different social policies. And when you complete a tree, there's another added bonus to it as well. Um, tradition is basically for smaller civilizations that want to have fewer cities, <laughs> excuse me, fewer cities, but bigger cities. Liberty are for civilizations that where you want lots of cities, but smaller cities. And honor is your combat uh, social policy. And the thing is, you, you can pick multiple social policies. You don't have to just stick to one. So later, as I get more points, as, as I get more social policies, I can go from tradition to liberty to you know whatever I want. And then these will get unlocked. And you, know, you can go crazy. But usually, uh, I'm overgeneralizing, but tradition is for Fewer cities, liberties for lots of cities, and honors for combat. And there are, of course, very complicated strategies around these different talents. But for now, we are going to pick, uh, let's go with honor. Let's go with a fighting one. Oh, so actually, so the first thing you do is you have to do the, the social policy opener. And you have to adopt it. So when I adopt honor, it gives me 25% combat bonus versus barbarians. Barbarians are the neutral enemy of the game. They attack other civilizations as well as city-states. Um, we haven't run into a barbarian yet, but hopefully we, we will. All right. And we're going to keep on trucking. Our scout's going to keep exploring. And he's going to... Oh, there we go. So there there's a barbarian camp. And so these camps will spawn other barbarians, and those barbarians will start attacking the nearest thing they see. Or, well, they'll explore and attack whatever the heck they want. But basically, they can steal your workers, they can attack your city. It's really bad. So um, with honor, we get a bonus for our fighting the barbarians. So hopefully it'll help. Uh, a unit needs orders. We are going to move here and keep exploring. All right. Next turn. Oh, I didn't explain what the other thing culture does. So the other thing that culture does is expand your borders. So if you notice, when you when you spawn your cities, you only get these six squares around your city. But then if you click on your city, you'll notice these purple highlighted uh, tiles. Those are the tiles that are going to get uh, where to where your borders will expand the next time your uh, culture meter fills up. So aside from the social policy, um, thing you've also got this icon over here or this uh, culture thing over here that tells you how much culture you need for this city before the borders expand so right now we're only producing one per turn we have to get to 15 and that's when the borders will expand and it'll give us one of these um, one of these tiles the other thing you can do is use gold to buy these tiles that's another way to spend your money and you can buy up whatever you want but we've only got 120 we might buy a tile depends on when our worker comes out. He comes out in six turns, so we'll see. All right, a unit needs orders. All right, we're going to keep moving. Um, let's talk about fighting barbarians really quick. So you can use your scout to fight as well. It is a combat unit. If you hover, if you select the unit and you hover over the enemy unit, you can see on the lower left side sort of a summary of what's probably going to happen. There's always a random chance that this won't happen every time. There's always a random, num uh, I think, a random number damage generator. And so it's not always going to do, you're not always going to uh, do five damage and um, take seven damage or whatever it says there at the bottom. The other nice thing is it tells you the bonuses you get as well as the bonuses they get. Um, this is a minor defeat, so I'm not going to fight them. Not yet anyway. And we're just going to keep moving. And we're going to keep moving with the warrior. Let's explore down here. 
Oh look, it's another city-state. And the nice thing about exploring too is you get gold. And you can use that gold for borders or buying units or gifting to the city-states for bonuses. All right, York has grown, Washington has grown, everything is growing. All right, so now my city is grown to citizen two, or two citizens, and I think Washington's grown to three citizens, and it should be working three tiles, as we can see here. And where are we gonna go? And the other thing I wanna point out is my happiness is starting to drop dramatically. Uh, I think before we started with like 15 or something, but now it's dropped down to 11. Uh, remember, we're on the easiest difficulty, so it's being very generous with the happiness, usually at the higher difficulties. It's so hard to get happiness, and that's what really limits your ability to expand very quickly. Because if you do, if you go into unhappiness, if you go into negative happiness, negative happiness or unhappiness, you start to get penalized. Your cities don't grow. Um, if you get super unhappy, uh, your citizens will actually revolt, and your uh, military units will actually not perform as well. And this particular Shall rune that I just explored gave us a free tech. Method. So again, runes are very good. Uh, next turn, let's see. I think that's it. All right, animal husbandry is going to be done next turn. Everything's going to get finished. Oh, the, the other nice thing is that when you when you uh, found your second city, it's producing. Uh, more science as well. So the so there are advantages. You kind of got to balance it out. But basically, when you settle more cities, you're going to be producing more science because you have more citizens in that second city. So it's it's producing two science. It also produces gold, and you know you just kind of got to balance it out. Um, let's see. Warrior's going to keep exploring. Unit needs orders. This guy is going to go up here. And now we're actually getting close to the ice. Um, that's a pretty good indicator that there's nothing up here, so I'm going to start going to the right with the scout. And that's it. Next turn. What are we on? Turn 14. All right. Nothing over there. Um, I'll get right up next to the barbarians. Maybe they'll attack me. Because you get a bonus. You get a um, terrain bonus for if they attack you, if you're on the hill and they try to attack you, you get a small bonus. So I'm not afraid to move next to him. My warriors are gonna keep exploring and we're gonna keep moving. All right, this guy. Oh, okay, a little lesson in combat. If you're next to, if you try to move next to another enemy, it only lets you move one space. It's designed this way be for several different reasons. I think one of the main reasons is because there are ranged units in this game. And so I think the idea is to have the meat shields in front and then prevent the enemy from moving too fast to f just go straight for your range units. Um, so I'm gonna move around this guy. All right, and my guy's gonna move as well. And just keep exploring. Looks like we found uh, another civilization. So it looks like we've met China. So it looks like, uh, I guess China's uh, somewhere over here on the lower left. We'll find him soon. All right. Stuff's gonna keep building. Okay. Scout's gonna keep exploring. And it doesn't look like there's anything else over there, so I'm gonna bring the scout back pretty soon here in a second. All right, and there's China. All right, our warrior. What is our warrior gonna do? All right, not our warrior, our worker. Okay, our worker's done. He's he has two movement, just like a regular unit. He's gonna move towards this mine. Excuse me, I wanna, know, I wanna work the silver. All right, choose production. So now that the worker's done, um, what else have we built? We've built a worker. Why don't we build, just for, just for uh, learning purposes, let's build a building. So a building is, um, as the name implies, it's a building for your city, wherever you build it in. But it doesn't necessarily spawn on a tile. It's just part of your capital. So if you click on your capital, you can see, well, this is a wonder, but it's technically, it's a building. But basically, let's, let's build a building and I'll show you what happens. So buildings have a production cost, just like uh, a unit does. And so this, so what is this? The monument has... 40, it costs 40 hammers and it gives you two culture. So we already know what culture does. Culture gives you, um, having more culture will let you adopt social policies faster. 
and it'll also allow you to expand your borders faster. So that's what this does. And then granary, what does this do? This costs 60, gives you two food. You'll notice it has a maintenance cost of one. So that's the other uh, thing that gold is used for. Sometimes buildings have a maintenance cost and costs money per turn. Uh, units also cost money per turn. I believe they cost one gold per turn. I don't know if that applies on this difficulty level, but we'll see. Um, so granary, what does it do? Produces two extra food and each source of wheat, bananas, and deer that are worked or have the tile improvement produce an additional food. So basically this will give you more food. And for learning purposes, why don't we, why don't we, um, let's get the monument so we can expand quickly and then we'll, maybe we'll get some of this stuff later. All right, next turn. Okay, scout, what is this guy going to do? I'm going to move, actually, you know what, I'll move on Vienna and the borders. City states don't like it when you get in their, uh, in their borders, they start to get angry. It's only a slight penalty. It'll go away fast if you leave, but just something to note. All right, so this should be China. Oh, still haven't seen it. Yet. All right, so now you have your worker, and he's on the mine with the silver, and it does tell you it's a luxury resource. You can go to the build actions and construct a mine. And so I think it showed that the mine's going to take like five turns to complete, so it does take a while. Uh, we're just going to go on next turn for now. But once it's done, you'll notice that the happiness will increase. And see here, like I said, Vienna's starting to get pissed, so we're going to move away from there. All right. We're just going to keep moving, and there's Beijing. All right, next turn. Even brute beasts and wandering birds. So trapping's done. So now I can work the uh, ivory once I get another worker. Uh, what am I going to do? I got to move this guy. So he's going to move here, and I guess I can explore up there. This looks like a pretty small island. And I think we're going to find the edges of this uh, land pretty fast here. So it looks like this is the whole island. Um, the other civilizations are on another island, so we're going to have to um, transport our units via ship. I think you can... I'll, I'll show you how to move your units through water. You need a you need a technology in order to do it. Um, you need sailing in order to move your units. Actually, not sailing. You get sailing first, then you get optics, and then you can move your units through. And I'll show you how to do that at the end. Uh, for now, let's build uh, another, or let's get another tech. Let's get uh, let's get archery, so we can build another. I can show you what ranged combat looks like against that barbarian camp. So let's keep clicking next turn. All right, so to summarize so far, um, just to recap, I guess, uh, we started with our capital. Uh, I showed you guys uh, the different tile improvements and how they get worked by the citizens. I explained that food uh, helps you grow and get more citizens. Production is used to build units and buildings, and gold is used to purchase uh, units or buildings. It's used to buy tiles. It's used in diplomacy. It's used for city-states. It's used for income. A lot of things gold can be used for. Uh, science is produced by your cities, uh, that helps you research technologies faster, and culture is used uh, for s gaining new social policies, as well as expanding the borders of your cities. Uh, let's see, where are we going now? And we're just going to keep exploring, but this guy is blocking me, so I can't explore that way. So he's going to skip his turn. Uh, the scout is going to go, I guess there's not really anywhere for him to explore. Let's go back to our city. And that's it. Who grew? Save your crew. Is this even producing culture? It's not producing culture. All right, let me see. Can I buy a monument? Not yet. Maybe I'll buy a monument soon. I decided to make a worker instead. Okay. And Scout's gonna keep moving. And Barbarian can go through. This actually isn't a bad place. Eh, it's got some marshland. What you're looking for when you're looking for places to settle are things with luxury resources and food resources, and that's next to like a, next to fresh water. So rivers and lakes are good. Um, rivers produce, uh, excuse me, rivers add one gold to the tiles that it touches. Fresh water from rivers and lakes uh, give you uh, a bonus later on when you uh, research one of the technologies. It let it produces more food. When you research civil service and you have a farm next to a river, it'll produce more food. 
All right, where's our scout going? Scout's gonna keep exploring. Our warrior's gonna keep exploring, and I think it's gonna hit the end of the the island. What am I researching? Let's research what's around me. Animals. Um, I don't know. Calendar. We need. We need. Uh, we need to learn. We, we need to uh, uh, get these dyes. Let's see. Oh, I researched animal husbandry a while ago. I finished animal husbandry, and what one of the other things it did is it, did is it uh, revealed horses on the map. Horses is another type of resource, just like silver, just like uh, dyes, just like wheat, but they don't show up until you research that technology. And there's a couple other technologies like that. The other one being, I think, iron, and I think petroleum later in the game. So horses are now on the field, and I'll, sh I'll try to get uh, horses so I can show you. Here we go. You know what? I'm gonna buy this resource because I don't want who is this? I don't want Genghis Khan expanding his borders and getting this resource before me because horses are very valuable. Um, they're used for they're required for certain military units. So I'm gonna select buy a tile and I'm gonna buy the resource for 25 gold. And that's it. So choose production. Uh, Got to pick something for Washington. Uh, we're done with the monument. Let's build. We're let's build an archer. We just got done researching archery. Let's build an archer, and I can show you what range combat looks like. And we really need another worker. So silver's done. And if you go back to your happiness, if you look at the summary, you'll see that I'm getting uh, four from silver, and then because of the difficulty level, I think I get an extra happiness, so five. I get five from silver, and now my happiness is sixteen as opposed to what it was before, I think it was 11. And now you can see how, you know, you need the luxury resources in order to make more cities, et cetera, et cetera. So let's keep trucking. Uh, what's this guy doing? Uh, the worker is going to, I want him to go back over here. I want him to go to New York. So let's, let's move our worker back. And my scout is gonna keep exploring. There's nothing over here, all right. My warrior is also going to keep exploring, and that's the end of the island, so I'm going to send him back. I need to adopt a policy. Uh, honor, I can either get warrior's code or discipline. I'll just get, I'll get discipline. Gives me a bonus for when my units are together and fighting. Alright, uh, scout's going to keep exploring. I don't think there's anything else around here. Uh, warrior is going to keep moving. Uh, worker. Oh yeah, that's right. I wanted you over here. Um, t -t -t for the ivory? Well, my worker's still building. I'll just keep building on my, on my, uh, capital. One thing I want to point out is you don't need to build, you, you, your worker can build improvements on any tile. Almost any tile. It doesn't have to build on just a resource like silver or deer or wheat. If you move it onto a regular tile, it can usually build a farm anywhere and it can usually build a trading post anywhere. So you can improve the tiles around that don't have res strategic resources on them, or excuse me, resources on them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna improve the wheat so I can grow Washington faster. <clears throat> And sometimes it gives you a census every now and then. Uh, I think this is happiness and it tells you the ranking. Kind of helpful, especially at higher difficulties. It tells you, gives you a, l a little bit of an idea of who's doing what and how they're doing. All right, so my guy's gonna, keep, gonna build a farm here and we're gonna go to the next turn. So you can kind of get a feel for how this game is played so far. Um, I have two cities right now. I'm gonna be probably going to war with Genghis Khan uh, later in the game because he's right there and uh, he's in a good place. Usually the capital buildings are in good positions and he's close to me. He's, it's gonna, you know, once those borders touch, it's the tension starts building and someone is gonna end up on the other end of a pointy stick. So let's just keep moving. All right, so building, growing, building, researching, blah, blah, blah. I need more workers and more settlers and an army. You're going to come to find that you need everything in this game. It's just, it's a constant battle of just, I need everything. I need to put my cities in places and, oh, hey, look, it's another barbarian camp. Maybe we'll go fight that. My archer's up. We're going to, we're going to go fight it. 
All right, calendar's done. Let's see, scout needs to move. He's gonna move over here. Oh, I shouldn't have moved my guy. What? Well, whatever. All right, my warrior's gonna start heading towards that camp as well. And so is my archer. And it looks like they're trying, they might do, they might fight, we'll see. Uh, what else do I need to do? I need to research something. Uh, I don't know, let's research. I'm gonna get horses soon. Let's get, um, let's get the wheel. And do I have enough? I have 250, 250 gold. I wanna buy another worker. See, it's taking forever for this worker to come out. 20 turns and you can change your production so that he, so maybe you work hammers more and it'll change it to 10 turns as opposed to, uh, what was it, 20? Oh geez, so much. So, um, and if you'll notice, oops, sorry. If you'll notice the, um, it's taking away from the food because it's producing two food. So if I go here, it's gonna take 17 turns before a new city is born. So this is kind of how you manage, you micromanage your cities. Um, if I were to take away all of the workers, you'll notice it goes into starvation. And so if it goes into the negative, see where it says progress, 16 out of 33. And I told you that if it goes past 33, you'll get a new citizen. Well, if you're starving and it goes below, so right now I'm going, um, I'm in the negative. I'm producing negative four food per turn because I'm not working anything. If it goes in the negative, I will lose citizens. So your population can decrease that way as well. For now, I'll just keep it, I'll let the AI handle it. Uh, the other thing you can do, instead of trying to micromanage individually, you can also click on these different focuses. So if I wanted to focus on production, it'll automatically select what it thinks is the best uh, way to work the tiles. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna keep it on default. So what do we need to do? Production. Okay, I built an archer, I built a monument. Let's build, let's build, I want more workers. I feel like I'm not producing as much. Let's get another worker out. Then I'll build a, I'll build a settler after that. Okay, the scout's gonna come up. Okay, here's here's range combat. So, in order to do ra a range attack, you just select, select range attack, and most range units in the beginning have a range of two. Um, I'm too far away, so what I'm gonna do is move up one. And then shoot this guy! As you can see, there's a little, nice little animation there. I did six damage and got two experience out of it. Keep moving my warrior up as well. Okay. These guys don't want to fight. The scout can also move up. The scout can also fight. Looks like this is uh, a victory because they're already wounded. So if you're wounded, you don't fight at your full strength, usually. There's a couple, there's a civilization that does, but that's a unique ability. Anyway, so before I attack with my scout, I want to soften them up again with my archers. Oh, and they might actually kill them. Okay, for purposes of the video, I'm gonna uh, use the scout first. And the scouts are normally weaker with an attack strength of four. But because they're already wounded, uh, the scouts will win. They still took a little bit of damage. Um, whenever you clear an encampment, you get uh, bonus money out of it. And then because of my social policies, because I'm in honor, if you read it, you'll notice that I gain culture from killing barbarians. So there's that as well. All right, unit needs orders. Barbarian's gonna move. And our archer... Uh, I guess you can go back and defend. Oh, we should move towards the other barbarian camp. Let's kill that. Let's do that. So you're always trying to make use of all of your units, always trying to make use of, you know, everything. That's a big part of this game. Oh, so let's talk about when your unit gets damaged. You always have the option to heal. They stay in place and basically heal. If you're outside of your borders, they heal, I think, one HP per turn. If you're in your borders, they heal two HP per turn. And then if they're in the city, I believe they heal three HP per turn. And I think all units have 10 hit points. So I'll just have my, for purposes of the video, I'll just have my scout heal in place. You can you can see it. Uh, warrior's gonna keep moving. Uh, let's see, where do I want him? Let's go over here. Uh, worker. Oh, the worker is done building a farm, and now I'll just click on this really quick. So now you can see, it, I think before this tile was producing two food, one 
hammer and one gold. Now it's producing three. And also the mine is improved. So the silver was producing um, two hammers, two gold, but now it's producing uh, an additional hammer. Actually, I don't, I think, did it start with gold? I don't remember. Anyway, and even though it's improved, it's not necessarily worked. You have to take a citizen and move it on there for it to get worked, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna micromanage in this game. I'm just gonna let the AI determine where it wants me to build. Uh, worker, worker, worker. How much money do I have? 330, this guy is taking forever. So, instead of trying to wait for the worker to come out, we're gonna spend our gold and we're gonna buy a worker instantly. That's another way you can use your gold. Uh, what am I doing here? Worker. Tree chopping. Let's do that. All right. So I'm going to move my worker over here. When you, um, sometimes in order to work an improvement, there are trees in the way or something else in the way, like marsh. I think marsh is another type of tile, if I can find one here. So marsh is here. So you have to get rid of that. Um, get rid of the trees or get rid of the marsh before you can work the tile. So this worker, I'll show you next turn, but basically, um, in order to get rid of it, you need to have the tech unlocked. So when you get mining, you also get the ability to chop down forests. When you get masonry, you also have the ability to clear a marsh. And there are other things like that in the, the game as well, but we'll start with that. A unit needs orders, who needs orders? Okay, the archer. Uh, where is he heading? Back to over there. Let's make him move towards that. Barbarian encampment. Actually, I'm gonna move. Uh, I'll move my scout next turn. So sometimes the enemy civs will initiate diplomacy with you. So she wants to have open borders, which basically means they want to travel in our territory. That's fine. I'll accept. I don't care. Uh, let's see. What do I want? My scout. I want to show you something else you can do. You can garrison a unit in the city. So I'm going to move my scout over to Washington. It's different from just occupying the city. When you garrison a unit, it increases the defense of the city. So right now, the combat strength is 9 for the city, but if you put a unit in it, it becomes higher. Oh, looks like we got a social policy. Uh, military cast. Each city with a garrison. Oh, look at that. We were just talking about it. Each city with a garrison increases empire happiness by 1 and culture by 2. So we've already talked about happiness, we've already talked about culture, so this is a pretty good talent, or pretty good uh, social policy. All right, what's our worker doing? Our worker is gonna chop down the forest. So when you chop down a forest, not only does it clear the, f clear the area so you can make an improvement, but it also gives you 20 production upon completion. So if there's a lot of forest around you, you can chop down the trees and it'll speed up whatever your city is currently building. So I'm gonna chop down that forest. My archer is gonna keep on trucking, heading towards that barbarian camp. Yeah, my worker that I bought is ready to be used. Um, let's. Uh, I'm gonna work. Let's get the ivory first. So one thing about one thing about luxury resources is even if you have multiple luxury resources of the same type. So let's say I work these two tiles. They're both luxury resources. They're both ivory, but I only get bonus for a bonus for one of them so they don't stack so even though i have two ivory i will still only get five, uh, five happiness or whatever it is what you can do is you can trade off your extra and maybe trade for a different luxury resource that you don't have with another civilization but or you could sell it just a couple of diplomacy options but we'll get into that later all right I've got the wheel my scout's gonna keep moving And my warrior is going to keep moving as well. I think this is a faster route. Uh, Archer is going to keep moving. And what else? Research. All right, let's get let's get some more of the advanced stuff. Let's get writing. And then I'm going to show you a little trick at the easier difficulty levels. You can you can jump to civil service. There's a lot of a lot more aspects to this game, and I'm only playing on the plain vanilla, the regular game. I'm not even playing on expansions. But if it feels like we've talked, we've covered a lot. It's because we have, and there's so much more to this game. Like I said, diplomacy is a big big aspect. We haven't even talked about great people yet. 
We haven't talked about uh, water and traveling over water. We haven't talked about what's called a golden age, but we'll be hitting a golden age very soon. And we'll get to that in a second. All right, the scout. So the scout is going to move into the city and he automatically garrison, he, he does this thing called a garrison in the city. Excuse me. And so what he does, if you click on your scout, um, if it isn't already highlighted, you can click uh, garrison in city and it looks like he's already done that. So what it does is, remember before how the combat strength was 9? Well, if you put a gar if you garrison a unit in the city, it increases the combat strength. In addition to that, as we've seen, there are certain social policies that may uh, have an effect. So right now, uh, I get one extra happiness and two culture by garrisoning the guy in the city. And I apologize, I'm losing my voice. So much talking. All right, let's speed things up. Uh, we're just gonna keep moving. I'm gonna put my warrior in here. Uh, this guy's gonna go here. Next turn. Oh, so clearing a forest has given me more hammers. <clears throat> I'm gonna move my warrior into the city to garrison. This will give me more happiness and culture. Uh, choose production. This needs something needs to get built. Stonehenge, Wonders. So Wonders are another type of building, except they're unique. Only one Wonder can be built anywhere in the world. So if another civilization builds Stonehenge before I do, I can no longer build Stonehenge. If two people are building Stonehenge at the same time, whoever finishes, finishes it first gets the Wonder. Whoever doesn't finish it, uh, doesn't complete it, and the whatever production was thrown into the building gets converted into gold. That's no good, you don't want that. All right, what am I gonna build? Let's build, let's build a granary. And this guy's gonna build calendar and the worker. And you know what, if you ever get tired of micromanaging your workers, there's always an option for build improvements automated. So I'm gonna have this guy do that. Because I don't want to micro my guys anymore. Because it's just uh, introduction or an, an instructional video. So, no stress. And sometimes it'll give you little not notifications and stuff. All right, my archer's gonna keep moving. And next turn. Golden Age. Okay. What is a golden age? A golden age happens when you fill up your uh, happiness meter. And right now it says golden age 10. But if you rewind the video a little bit, you'll notice that there were some numbers up here. I think it was like out of 500 is what it takes to, I think you need 500 extra happiness in order to fill it up. Uh, all, the, all the extra happiness you get from your city <clears throat> goes towards that number. So go, goes towards filling up uh, that happiness meter and getting a golden age. So what is a golden age? A golden age uh, lasts 10 turns and during the golden age all your cities produce more hammers and all your gold and it increases the gold production of tiles as well. Um, certain civilizations also get certain bonuses during golden ages but I'm not going to get into that. So basically during golden age you Produce more and you uh, get more gold. And I'm just gonna keep keep on playing. And actually I should have built a settler instead of granary, but that's alright. Ooh, there's guys. And it looks like they're producing archers now. Okay, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna move my guy over here. We're gonna fight. Uh, I'm gonna automate this guy as well. I'm tired of handling my. Actually, I want you to I want you to work on the horses. I want to show you what a strategic resource is. So he's gonna go there. And once that gets done, I'll build something else. All right, what am we gonna build? Philosophy. All right. Next turn. Oh my. All right, let's, let's fight. All 
and the enemy's gonna move and they'll fire back and only kill one of my guys which is great uh, Washington demands cotton and I'm tired of you you can also connect your cities with roads it'll create a trade route and gives you more gold this guy's gonna work the horses I'm gonna keep fighting Next turn. Alright. Wow, so much happiness. It's crazy. Where am I getting happiness from? Oh, so many, uh, so many resources. Oh, so your units gain experience, and then once they gain enough experience and gain a level, they get a promotion. Uh, <clears throat> for now, I'm just gonna get a uh, barrage. So, more damage to units in hills, forests. Man, I'm really losing my voice. This is terrible. Okay, I'm gonna build. I said I would build a settler. So I'm gonna build another settler. This guy is going to move in the forest <clears throat> and keep attacking. Right, more workers. This guy's going to fight. Uh, production. Um, build, there are certain buildings that produce happiness as well. It's not just from luxury resources. So there are all kinds of buildings that do all kinds of things. Wonders do all kinds of things as well. Um, what am I going to build in this city? I'll build a monument. So it can keep expanding its borders. And then the worker is going to work. <clears throat> Got to automate him. And after this, I need to get more military. All right. So this barbarian camp's almost dead. But these guys might steal it. Steal the money. Which would be terrible. It's alright. There is only one. Alright, philosophy's done. King's to, I enter a new era. Oh! Still hasn't taken it. What the heck? <clears throat> Alright, that's good. Let's get horseback riding. Actually, I'll show you. Yeah, let's get horseback riding. We're gonna have horses soon. And then we'll build. We'll build knights, and then we'll we'll kill Genghis Khan, and that'll be the end of the video. Cause my voice is failing. So it looks like China stole the encampment and got the gold. That's all right. This guy's done. I'm going to automate him. Um, one thing I forgot to point out, when you build a settler, your food doesn't grow. Your excess gets pumped into production. So it doesn't just use production to build a settler. It builds food and production. Just another thing to note. Oh, it looks like my golden age is done. So you'll see here, the uh, it takes um, <clears throat> 755 more happiness until I get to my next golden age. <clears throat> Alright, so we're just going to keep on trucking. There's more barbarians over there. I'm not going to fight them though. I'm just going to go back to my city. And my guys are working. Wow, I have four workers. That's crazy. 
Yep. I am going after I build a settler, I'm gonna build um a wonder. And then after that I'll focus on the army. And then we can end this video. End Gen Genghis Khan and end this video. Choose production. Alright, what am I building? Okay. I want to build the Great Library. The reason I'm building it is because if you look at the bottom, it says you get one free technology. And what does that mean? It it implies exactly what it means. You get one free technology. So anything that you are currently able to research, you can get it for free upon completion of uh, building the Great Library. So I'm shooting for civil service. Um, it's not uncommon to go f uh, get the Great Library for civil service. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see, what's the ch -ch -ch. choose production, start the great library, and remember how I said you can change your focus? Well, when, it, when you're trying to build a wonder, sometimes, excuse me, you want to focus all your energy into building it, so that way uh, you win the race of building it, because other civilizations will try to build it as well. So I'm going to switch from production focus and change uh, the, great, the number of turns it takes the great library to be produced from 23 to 15. And I'm also going to move my settler. And I'll move him over here. I'm not going to think about it too much anymore. And <clears throat> it's always good to have an escort with your guys. So I'll send out uh, the scout uh, to go with them. Research agreement. Um, a research agreement uh, is made by two civilizations. If you enter the research agreement, at the, at the end you get a research boost. So it costs money to enter the research agreement. And then I think when the res research agreement... Is completed you get a boost into uh, the number of beakers you get or something like that <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry I keep my voice is dying it's absolutely dying okay I'm just gonna build this is actually what happened yesterday I was trying to make this video my voice died like it is right now but that's okay we're gonna we're gonna get through this I'm almost done uh, settler is gonna build and my guy, give a second, my guy's gonna garrison for happiness and for uh, culture. And these workers will probably move over. I'm gonna start building. What do I wanna build? Let's build a monument so I can start. Hmm. Another thing your workers can do if you're trying to rush a wonder is chop down the trees. That's a good, that's a good tactic too. Chop down those trees. All right, so I'm done with horseback riding, and this is what I wanted. So I, I want to build this horse, and as you can see, <clears throat> it requires one horse. So whenever you improve a, a strategic resource, a strategic resource like horses or iron, it'll tell you how much of it it's producing. So this one is producing four, and you can look at your total at the top in the upper left. <clears throat> it looks like this one produces two. The new city that I just founded, it produces two. Uh, research, what am I doing? Ch -ch -ch. It doesn't really matter too much anymore. Oh, I'm trying to get knights. Uh, let's go mathematics. Um, ch -ch -ch. He's going to settle in there. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yep, we're done. All right, let's keep on trucking. Unit needs orders. Nothing's happening. Everyone's automated. Um, let's see, social policy, okay, war is code, I get a great general. So a great general is um, one of the several different great people that you can get. There's great generals, great engineers, great scientists, they do a variety of different things. You can expend them to start a golden age. Uh, this particular great person, the great general, gives a combat bonus to all surrounding uh, military units. The Great Engineer is used for hurrying production of uh, buildings. And the Scientist can also be used to open up a... can be used to open up a technology. Excuse me. Get a technology or uh, create uh, an academy which produces a lot of beakers. There's a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to check out Great People... Um, let's see if it has it here. Let's go to home. Uh, units. Does it have it here? Great people. 
No. Wonder social. Oh, specialists and great people. So if you want to check it out, just check it out here. Oh, we haven't even gotten to specialists yet. After I build this library, I'll show you really quick. All right, great people. So he's not going to do anything until I get an army. So we'll just keep. Uh, clicking next turn. Da -da -da. Yep, keep going. And at this point, I think I'm just going to start building an army because I don't need to. Um, I can build a host of things, but I'm just going to start building the horsemen. And AI is doing its thing. It's fine. And I'm going to have the Great Library in six turns. Unit needs borders. Next turn. Da da da. Yep. Keep going. Okay, so here are the quests that I was talking about. So Cape Town wants Geneva eliminated. Oh, oh, I got a, I got a research. Open borders ended. Da da. Okay, so Cape Town wants Geneva uh, gone. So if you kill the town of Geneva, Geneva should be another city state. I don't know where they are. Okay, they're somewhere on the map. They're probably over here somewhere. But if you eliminate them, you get favor with Cape Town. And they'll produce, they'll give you, they'll become allies and they'll help you fight and they give you a, this particular one gives you a food bonus, other ones have culture and combat bonuses and things like that. Uh, research, what am I researching? Let's get currency. Next turn. Uh, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. Actually, you know what? I'll show you how to trade. We have multiple, we have multiple, um, copies of ivory, so I'm going to trade. I'm going to go to Beijing, I'm going to say, hey, I've got extra ivory, I want some money for it, let's give me 150 bucks, and I'll sell it to you. Goodbye. So now I've got 150 gold extra, and that's that. That's basic diplomacy. And we're going to use that money to upgrade units, because our horsemen that we're about to build are going to get upgraded into knights. My workers are working. Great library is about to pump out. And this should be it. Alright. So the great library gives you a free technology. It also gives you a free library in the city it was built. So if you go here, I now have a library for free. It gives me extra science. I would have normally had to pay, if I go to another city, I would have normally had to build that library. I would have normally had to have built that library for 75 hammers. But it gives it to me for free. Uh, in addition, I get a free tech. So I, get, I click on this. Um, and I am going to pick civil service. And close. So now the I have civil service. Saves us from the, uh, the main reason I'm getting it is for... Um, the increased food from farms, but you also get access to pikemen and another wonder, the Chichen Itza or something. And it, it increases, you know, buildings do all kinds of things, wonders do all kinds of things. This particular one gives you happiness and increases the length of golden ages by 50%. So instead of 10 turns of golden age, you get 50. And I'm in the medieval area era. Uh, library is done. I am now going to start building my horsemen. <clears throat> Because we're going to take out Genghis Khan. Uh, Barbarian can't be discovered. Uh, that's too far away. Trade route established. So now that this road is built, it lets you it lets your units travel faster, and uh, a trade route is established, so it will produce more gold. Um, City State wants me to do that, but we're going to ignore that for now. The other thing I want to show you, let me once I get uh, 500 gold. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some favor with one of these city states, and then I'll show you the bonus you get. <coughs> Excuse me. Work on horses. Oh, why are you building a farm there? I want horses. Alright, let's see what happens. 
Oh, so I got my first horseman. Horseman. As you can see, he moves a lot faster than regular unit. He has, uh, I think, four movement. Yes, he does. <coughs> uh, all the cities are garrisoned. I am going to plop my... Let's get right here. Let's get ready to take this guy out. Let's build more horses! Adopt policy. Oh, I'm going to complete honor. So uh, adopting all policies in honor tree in the honor tree will grant gold for each enemy unit killed, which is awesome. And finishing, I get this last one gives me extra experience. Now I have all the honor. Great. Oh, it's my first time unlocking. Awesome. Uh, choose production. What are we gonna get? Horses! More horsemen. So now I'm out of horses. I'm building all the horsemen I can build. But this should give me two more. Oh, I have 500 gold. Okay. So Cape Town. I'm gonna click on Cape Town. It's a maritime state, so if I ally with it, I'll get a food bonus. I'm gonna provide a gift of gold. You can uh, give uh, 250, 500, or 1,000. I'm gonna give 500 because I want to be allies. Because if you, if you be friends, you get a small bonus, but if you get... Uh, if you become allies, you get a huge bonus. So I'm going to click that. So now we're allies. So now I get three gold extra in my capital. And I get one extra in all my other cities. Oh, and they also give me gems. Which is a luxury resource. Which gives me more happiness. Alright, you need supporters. He's going to wait. Oh, you're only power 10. You're so weak. Oh, it has come to my attention that you're getting a little friendly with Cape Town. Oh, I'm sorry. Alright, keep on trucking. Oh, I need to switch you out. You need to go back to default focus. Alright. <coughs> Currency. Currency's done. Uh, let's get chivalry for the knights. And I built a bunch of horses. Um... My plan is to upgrade them, but I may not have enough money. But that's fine. I'll just throw my horses at the city. They'll die. I'll build more. It'll be awesome. Okay. Uh, production. Do I want to go into production? How many turns until? 10 turns. I'll escalate production. And I'll escalate production here. And I will escalate. Uh, three turns. I'll, I'll let you keep growing. Settler, circus, da da da. Um, I don't know. Let's build a stable. So I think we gotta help. That should help. Actually, is there anything else I can build? National Epic, Hanging Gardens. Da -da. Let's build. Do I really want? To... Yeah, let's build a library. Why not? All right, let's keep moving. Oh, move stack unit. Mm. All right, let's move you there. We're gonna get ready to attack this guy. I need more guys though. Sometimes taking a city is hard. Taking a city is hard. Uh, you're gonna move all the way across. I want you on the other side. Horsemen. Production. Uh, I already have a library. Sky, I don't know. We'll build a market. Uh, worker, you can automate. Horsemen. Remove. Oh, there's two cities. Oh well, let me be here. You're gonna go here. And that's it. Uh, so cities can attack. Uh, cities have a range attack as well. So, so they'll do their thing. Boston has grown, da da da. It's fine. Golden Age is still happening. Oh, I can build another. Horsey. Alright, whatever. Let's just keep... Uh, you're just gonna sit there until I'm ready. I'm gonna go here. You can run around to the other side. Mm. 
I'm trying to s circle this, or surround this thing. I don't know if my four horsemen are going to be enough. I don't think they will be. Need more units. Let's go here. Oh, can I move? Lag. Alright. He'll sit there and do nothing. Okay, keep building, keep building. Production. Research agreement is complete. Awesome. Grants me a technology boost. Awesome. Okay, what am I doing? It's production. Let's just build more horses. And there's a better way to assault cities. I'm just going to show you how it's done. Oh, um, this way for purposes of the video. Horses, all right, see so message. Yep. We are going to war soon. Five turns, three turns, 12 turns. <clears throat> I'll go as soon as this, as soon as this guy finishes. All right. Golden Age ends, it's fine. Oh, I gotta be in borders for it to promote. That's okay. Oh, oh, a settler. I'm gonna steal it from you if he moves. All right, so my horseman's there. Horseman, go ahead and move. Uh, here, it's fine. Cheese production. I can't build any more horsemen because I'm out. Let's just build, I don't care, pikemen. Adopt a policy. Let's get... Side. Let's get commerce. Uh, next turn. I'm going to have chivalry in a couple turns. Oh, and I can steal it! Oh, I can steal these workers! New York is starving! Why can I only move this guy to the space? Oh, there's a river there. Alright. Where am I going? This guy is gonna go there, this guy's gonna go here. Choose production, we'll get a pikeman. More units. Uh, the w reason I'm waiting is because I'm about to finish Silvery and I want to upgrade these guys. But I may not upgrade all of them. We'll see how it goes. Oh, next turn. And I'm going to steal these guys, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you better defend your settler. There's nowhere for you to go. All right. So New York is starving because I have them, um, I think, focusing on production. So I'll switch that back. Okay. Uh, I want to show you how to upgrade a unit. Uh, we're going to... The, guy, the unit has to be in the borders, so I'll put them over here first. And then you just click on the upgrade unit. Oh wow, it only costs 65 gold? Upgrade all my guys. Holy garbage. That's awesome. I should bring my other guys back too. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's bring my guys back. Choose research, doesn't really matter. Oh, actually I'll get sailing. I'll show you how to, how to embark a unit. Oh, I have more horses than, what? All right, I'm gonna show you how to steal a worker and I'm gonna fight. So this guy, actually I'll use my warrior. Um, I will attack first, yeah, I'll attack. Goodbye. So I kill that guy and I stole his worker. And then I'm gonna keep moving towards it, towards the city. Uh, I'm gonna attack there as well. But my knights are awesome because they have 18 attack power and archers I think only have four. Uh, this arch, this guy is gonna go. Why not? Let's attack the city. Why not? Uh, this guy is gonna move here, steal that worker. This guy's gonna move over here and get upgraded. And I'll go to next turn. This should be over pretty quickly. Only two damage. So the way you attack a city, so the cities will attack you. 
Every, all cities, including yours, get a range attack. But... Uh, you're gonna get upgraded. Uh, you are gonna charge in. You are also gonna charge in. You are also gonna charge in. Wow, I'm really losing this fight. That's not good. Sorry, right, I don't care. As you can see, the city's almost dead, but so are my units. They are dying, but I can just build more. Uh, what am I building? Let's build... Oh, I have a horseman. Awesome. Let's build more pikemen. And this guy is going to get upgraded. Let's, let's move him over here first, and then I'll upgrade you. All right, choose production. Oh, I can fire as well. Awesome. Let's build more pikemen and have my pikemen move. Uh, this horseman is going to... Can I fight? No, he's going to heal. This guy is going to keep moving. Oh, I didn't bring my great general. That's important. I should bring my general to the fight. He gives a bonus. To my combat units. Uh, this guy's going to heal. You're going to heal. And you're going to heal. All right. You are going to get automated. All right, next turn. Oh no, my horse is dead. Oh, so sad. That's all right, I'll just build more. Uh, unit promotions, awesome. Drill, yes. Promotions, drill, yes. Promotions, yay. Okay. Fire on the enemy. My, where's my general? My pikeman is going to keep moving. You are going to attack. You can keep attacking. You can keep attacking. And you can keep attacking. Oh no, my knights are dying. Oh no, so sad. Did I get it? Yes! I got the city. So once you get the city... Oh, it's lost its capital. So you can either create a puppet or annex a city. There's details around that. I'm not going to go over it. Um, bas uh, basically, the, uh, you can read it. There's, it's too detailed. I'm just going to uh, create a puppet. Um, and that's it for this video. I think Optics is going to finish, so I'm just going to show you very quickly how to embark a unit after it gets done, and then that'll be the end of the video. Uh, you're going to heal. And next turn. All right, now I can embark a unit. So to embark a unit, you just take your unit, you go up to the water, and he will turn into a ship. Uh, if it's not a combat, if it's just a regular land unit, it doesn't have any combat strength. It's just a regular non-military unit, but you can move it around. Uh, that's pretty much it for uh, this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment or send me a message. I'll try to answer it. But the probably one of the best resources for this game is a is a website. I think it's uh, Civ Fanatics. Uh, I'll put up the link in the video descriptions. But otherwise, again, I hope this was helpful. If you have any messages, just, if you have any questions, just message me. Um, have fun gaming. Have fun playing Civilization V. Thanks, guys.